staff, students, and all key stakeholders, and welcome to our parent university session. My name is Kyron Harvell. I am the director of the School Culture and Climate Grant, which is called STAR, which stands for School Transformation Accelerates Results. Our session this evening is entitled Secondary Planning. I've graduated from high school. Now what? We are very fortunate to have facilitators Michelle Strauss, Executive Director of the College Area Capital Access Network, and Terry Bernero, Director of the Pathway Promise and Hope Promise Scholarship Program. We will take questions and answers during the last 15 minutes of this segment. Please feel free to enter any questions you have into the Q&A section. And I'll also monitor the chat. Thank you very much for being here. And I will turn it over to our facilitators. Well, good evening, everybody. As Kyron said, my name is Michelle Strauss. I'm the Executive Director of the Capital Area College Access Network. We call ourselves CAPCAN for short. It's a lot easier to remember CAPCAN. So I'm excited to be with you today. I don't know whether or not we um, can maybe throw in the chat uh, whether or not your students are juniors or seniors, um, especially seniors. We are looking to uh, reach out to those families right now because we are in the middle of a lot of deadlines. So if you could throw that into the chat, that would be awesome. Um, I am going to share a few things with you and then turn it over to Terry for a few minutes to talk about some things related to the work at the Lansing School District and then I will dive into all things uh, financial aid and scholarships. So we hope that this will be helpful for you as you're working with your kids and talking in your families about the importance of college attainment. So let's see if I can get my slides to work here. Oh. Here we go. So Capillary College Access Network is a community collaborative network and we're dedicated to increasing college attainment. We um, focus our work on increasing um, college readiness, participation and completion. And we're primarily targeting our first generation college students in the community. So that if your son or daughter is the first student in the family to uh, go on and uh, achieve a um, college education, then that's what we mean by first generation. We like to start off by defining what we mean by college or post-secondary education. We use those words interchangeably. So if I say college, I mean any two-year, four-year degree program like at Lansing Community College or MSU, a certification or credentialing program, particularly if a young person is interested in um, getting a short-term certification for things like being a sonographer. Um, or working as an electrician. We also will help students um, get to the right support if they're interested in the military and there are certainly a lot of resources out there for young people to uh, start their post-secondary education while they were, are actually serving in the military. Um, we also have students who are interested in doing national service. All of our our college advisors, who I'll talk about in a few minutes, are AmeriCorps members, and so they're very capable of helping students who are interested in national service. And then lastly, we will also work with students who are interested in apprenticeship programs. Um, we know in this community that there is a huge need for skilled trades um, and things like construction, um, certainly electricians, uh, we know that, that these are, are growing opportunities and we have a lot of really excellent resources here in the community for apprenticeship programs as well. One of the things that I like to do is set the stage for, for why college is important. Obviously college is important, um, you know, for our, our community um, because 70% of the jobs in our community already require some type of post-secondary degree or credential, which means that a high school diploma alone is no longer enough to um, be uh, successful in, in many of the jobs in our community. Um, we also know that, that college is certainly a place where your family can increase your um, economic stability. Um, with the pandemic, we know uh, folks who have um, probably had some of the greatest challenges 
um, in being laid off or let go from their jobs um, are those that maybe don't have advanced education beyond high school or if you're working in an essential frontline position, whether you're working in retail or transportation, um, you know, you are put at risk every day. And, um, you know, some of, of the opportunities that, that uh, people might want to continue to advance in do require more education. And we wanna make sure that your students have more options as they go forward. I'm going to let Terry talk for a few minutes about the uh, Pathway to Promise programs at the Lansing School District so she can sh share the context of why this is important for us to connect college and career. Michelle, can you, um, I'm going to share my screen because I updated a slide this Oh, slide. sure. Actually, yep, I'll let go. Slide that was um, last year, so. There. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay, great. So um, Big Dream is not just a slogan in the Lansing School District. We truly do have a plan to help students dream big about their futures. And we feel like we do have the supports in place to make sure that those dreams um, become reality. In the Lansing School District, we do have something that's called the Lansing Pathway Promise. It's not just a pretty diagram of how our schools are um, organized. It is really a way of thinking about how to expose kids to the college and career opportunities that are in not only our area, but really across the state of Michigan. Um, as you know, we have three high schools in the Lansing School District. We've attached career pathways to each of those high schools and these pathways are high demand, high wage jobs. Because when our kids start dreaming about their futures, we want to make sure that they're well informed of what kind of jobs are out there. Um, there's no sense of a second, a third grader, or a ninth grader dreaming of being a professional underwater basket weaver if we don't have those kind of jobs in the Lansing area. Um, so if you look at how sciences we, we're blessed in Lansing to have two major hospitals, Sparrow and McLaren, thousands of jobs there. And we have to stop thinking about those are just um, doctors and nurses. They have IT people at Sparrow. They have human, uh, serve, human resource specialists at McLaren. So just a host of different jobs at those two hospitals. Um, IT, there's about a thousand jobs right now that are open in the Lansing area that can't be filled because we don't have the trained workforce. And then you look at advanced manufacturing, of course, Lansing, you know, go GM, we're a GM town, but not only um, good jobs at, at the factories in Lansing, but you have all those auto suppliers who need engineers and CNA operators. Um, so lots of jobs uh, in those different career pathways. And I have to lastly mention insurance. Um, not only do we have big insurance companies in the Lansing area, we have world headquarters. Think about the, these big buildings you see around Lansing. Um, Farm Bureau, Accident Fund, Jackson National, right off the highway there at 96. They employ thousands of people and those could be our students, your children, again, getting these high wage jobs. And, and not all these jobs take a four year degree. I'm right with um, Michelle that we gotta start rethinking what college is. It's not just for the doctors or the lawyers, the teachers, the engineers. Um, it is for the plumbers, the electricians, the police officers, the firefighters. They need, a, they don't need four year degrees, but they do need some college. Um, usually it's a, it's two years. LCC has a, a lot of great programs there that it's an associate's degree. So it'll take you two years. They have other special certificates and certifications. that are 12 months, 18 months. So don't think when you're going to college, it's going to take you, oh no, I don't want to do that. Uh, it's going to take me four years because in, in a lot of cases, it won't. 
Um, so this is just how we've arranged our schools. Um, and I just want to add that at the lower levels, you see all these schools that are in gray. That those are elementary schools. We really try to do career awareness for those kids. Um, open up all the possibilities for them. And then in the middle grades, it's more about exploration. Now they kind of have an idea of what's out there and what they like to do and what they don't like to do. So digging in a little bit deeper. And at the high school, what my job is and my pathway navigators, which I see one of them has joined us, um, we want to give our high school students some real uh, life work-based learning opportunities. We want to see them out of the classrooms. We want to see them in internships, apprenticeships, job sh shadowing opportunities. So really give them a feel for what some of these careers are all about. Um, this is just the narrative that's on top of that diagram. And uh, at this point, I just want to point out that we do have the Lansing Promise Scholarship that's available for our students who attend. Uh, schools in the Lansing School District boundaries. You have to, um, of course, live here and attend the schools, graduate, apply, and get accepted. 65 free credits at Lansing Community College or that equivalent amount you can take to MSU in Olivet. Um, a couple years ago, all our students in high school were using a platform called Career Cruising. Um, they have since been bought by a different company called Zillow, but I wanted to point out that at the time our kids were using career cruising three years ago, this was one of the results to Matchmaker, where kids answer 40 questions and it matches them with some careers. And you can see the number one career is professional athlete. Now we don't wanna be um, dream crushers in the Lansing School District, but we do wanna be realistic with students. Um, most of the time, this is the choice because it's the fame and the fortune, it's, it's what they see. Um, so we wanna expose them to just more than that. In the Lansing School District at the beginning of the year when we were using Career Cruising, this was our October result. So unfortunately, um, we had the same kind of uh, occupation at the very top of the list, but I'm pleased to report at the end of the year, um, professional athlete was not even in the top 10. So that was really um, a big triumph for us. And it goes to show you what can happen if you just expose kids to some other career um, possibilities. This is Zillow. Uh, if you all the kids in the Lansing School District do have a Zillow account. So if you ask your child about it, um, they'll know how to log in. It's their first initial of their first name and then their last name, first initial, with their student ID number at student.lansingschools. Um, that's how they get in and then they should know their password. This is where they do most of the exploration about college and careers um, at the K-2 level. And again, I don't know if Kyron got uh, where our parents, what grade level um, we're at with our audience tonight. But at K-2, they play this great interactive game and they're exposed to um, this, call, this place called Career Town. And they get to work in the hospital, they get to build things, and they're exposed to, and we don't call them real jobs or try to attach them to specific careers, but it's, they find out whether they like business or they like helping people or they like to be creative. So um, it's really a, a self-exploration game that they're getting into that kind of sets the tone for career pathways. In the middle grades, three through five, um, this is, again, more self-exploration. What do they like to do? What don't they like to do? They get lessons. They get to start building kind of a portfolio. What are your interests? What are you good at? Um, what do you see yourself doing in the future? And then it's the start of making a plan, which is really important for our kids. 
And then at the high school level, well, sixth through 12th grade, this is the platform and you can see it takes on a kind of a Facebook um, look to it. And this is where they go in and each student uh, has specific tasks to do that relate to um, careers, to colleges, they get to explore majors. Um, they get to also, there's something called a storyboard where they can just save anything they see on the internet. Um, maybe it's a cool article about nursing or somebody who just won an award in engineering, they can start saving those things that are of interest to them. So they have it in their portfolio. And again, it goes back to when ki kids, kids can only be what they can see. So when we have this tool, um, Zello, it gives them the opportunity to see the world of work, what's out there, the colleges, the universities that can support their dreams. Um, they also, it's not only just about the four-year colleges. Again, if I, I was joking with um, Michelle earlier, there's so many occupations on there, it's incredible. I think there's 3,000. I mean, if a person aspires to be a crossing guard, that's even on there. It tells about that job and what kind of skills it takes. So uh, it's just a great tool. Um, in Zillow, every student is required to do an educational development plan that has their plan for the future. Your students can share their plan with you all they have to do is go to the um, top taskbar and it says share link. And they just copy that and they give that to parents or counselors or whoever wants to see them. Um, that's really easy to do. If the student is having trouble doing that, they can always reach out to the folks who work with me. Those are the pathway navigators. They can reach out to the Promise Pathfinders at their school. And I'm sure that the college advisors at each of the high schools would be able to help them um, log in and share their link with whoever wants to see it. Um, and that's all I have for now. So let me stop sharing my screen and we can go back to Michelle. Great, thanks, Terry. Mm -hmm. well, as she mentioned, the students have the ability to start to look at some of the um, career programs in Zello, but they can also look at the colleges or the majors um, in Zello that align with the things that they're interested in doing as their career profession. So one of the things that, you know, we want to make sure that you all understand is that this process and all of these people that are working within the Lansing School District and outside of the Lansing School District to support your students are here to help them navigate the process. So obviously we want to encourage your students to talk to their counselors regularly um, and they certainly are doing that as they're scheduling their annual high school classes but as they hit junior and senior year and they're going through Zello, they should use that as an opportunity to have a college uh, or post-secondary planning conversation. Um, your counselors are also going to be the people that are going to um, help your students should they have any uh, special educational needs and need accommodations to take um, their uh, exams like the the SAT um, or AccuPlacer if they're planning to go to Lansing Community College. Those need to be requested ahead of time. So we wanna make sure that students are working proactively with their counselor to request those accommodations. And then the counselor will also send over the transcripts for students when they actually apply to a college or university so that that college can make some determination regarding what placement levels the student might need to be in um, for a math class, for an English class. Um, and then they'll also use that in, in many cases um, for admissions decisions. Um, particularly this year with the pandemic, um, the SAT is not gonna be required by most colleges and universities. So the only information that they have to go on about a student's readiness for college will be those transcripts. 
So it's important for the students to be working with their counselor to make those requests for that information to go to their colleges where they've applied. Um, I'm going to talk more about college advisors in a minute, but uh, Terry uh, alluded to the um, navigators and the pathfinders who are also employees of the Lansing School District who are available to assist students in, in completing their Zello, um, but also in following up on a lot of the, the tasks really that are required of um, students as they transition from high school to college. So those are great resources and we encourage you to reach out to those people if you need assistance. Um, and then again, for any student that is, uh, has a diagnosed um, uh, IEP or 504 plan, they need to work with their transition staff person at the school district to um, help them in finalizing their IEP so that they can actually take those accommodations to college. Um, I do a whole nother workshop on how to go to college with your IEP. Um, so I wanted to make sure to mention that, that there are lots of additional support um, people that are available to assist students who, who have any type of, of learning or physical disabilities. These things are slow in moving tonight. I apologize. I'm stuck. There we go. All right. So um, we have had a wonderful partnership with the Lansing School District now for 11 years, believe it or not, um, in ensuring that there are uh, dedicated college advisors in the high schools to support your students to help navigate the college process. So these three young ladies are um, in your buildings. Uh, Jamie Park serves at Everett High School. Kim Trong serves at Lansing Eastern High School. And Victoria Thatch serves at Sexton High School. And Victoria happens to be an alumni of uh, the Lansing School District. She graduated from Sexton. And she had a college advisor when she was in high school. So she brings a really unique perspective to the work having been uh, both an alumni of Lansing, but also someone who benefited from having the services of a college advisor um, in the high school. And all three of them are working very collaboratively right now, particularly as, as you're all virtual, to um, coordinate uh, activities. So for example, um, they've been working to have college representative visits. So you might have on a Tuesday the opportunity to meet from the admissions representative from Northern Michigan. And on Thursday, you might have the opportunity to meet with the admissions person from Saginaw Valley State University. So these advisors are working on that, that joint schedule and are making those opportunities for students in lieu of going on actual college visits on a bus to go visit campuses. We hope someday we'll get back to that, but they're definitely working on that. Um, they also are working with our students on their college applications. We did most of that um, in the months of September, October, and November. That's the typical time frame when we do college applications. But it's never too late, honestly, to apply to a college. Um, particularly right now, there's sort of a more uh, recognition of a, a rolling admissions process. Um, so you could go online to Lance Community College today and uh, fill out the application and you technically are accepted as a student um, as soon as you complete the application if you were to apply to LCC. Um, with other colleges and universities, it may take a little more time to find out whether or not you've been accepted. But, um, you know, if students are working closely with their college advisor and have all the pieces in place, um, then, then you'll hear fairly quickly from that college or university whether or not you've been accepted. Um, one of the things that I, I need to remind um, parents and students is that not every college requires uh, an essay um, for admissions. Um, so, you know, make sure that you uh, do a little bit of homework and work with that college advisor to determine whether or not uh, your student 
is interested in applying to a school where they have an um, essay that they have to submit, um, and the advisor is happy to work with the student if that is the case. But there are many schools that, that don't require um, any type of essay. So don't let the essay be um, a barrier in, in terms of applying to college at this point. The other thing that our college advisors do is uh, support students and you as parents in completing the FAFSA form. And we're running a big campaign this year called FAFSA Flocked. Um, you, if you haven't already seen some flamingo things, you'll be seeing more of it as we move into February, which is our big push. Um, so we just want families to know that, that uh, FAFSA is uh, while it might seem difficult, it's not overwhelming. We've got lots of help and um, we're here to get you through that process and get, you know, the money that students are eligible for so that they can actually follow through on their college going intentions. And just a reminder too, Michelle, that FAFSA <laughs> is required when you are applying for the Lansing Paramus Scholarship. Yes, thank you for, for reminding that. So I always remind families as well that don't ever pay to have the FAFSA filled out. Um, it's not like your taxes where you might want to pay somebody to help you fill out your taxes. You don't need to pay anybody to do a FAFSA. Um, we provide that service to you for free. And um, if a student goes online and someone says you need to pay me, you know, 60 bucks to fill out the FAFSA, that's a scam. So stay away from those websites. Um, so we only use the FAFSA.gov website to complete the FAFSA. Um, that website really is, uh, by putting in all your information, is how you can obtain access to federal, state, and then institutional support. So the support from the college or university that you plan to attend. And you will get um, a range of, of information back from the college or university telling you what scholarships you might be available for, what grants you might be available for, and that's free money, that's money you never have to pay back. Um, whether or not a student might be eligible for work study, Work study is when a student has a job typically on campus or affiliated with campus, it's subsidized by the federal government. And any money that the student makes on that job is actually to be used um, by the student as their spending money. So it could be used for books, it could be used to help pay for rent, um, you know, any other living expenses that, that the student might have. And then, of course, we also um, oftentimes families will find out whether they're eligible for loans. Um, we want to remind families that that you really don't want to take out um, student loans that are not subsidized by the federal government. So if your bank or your credit union are offering you loan, loans to go to college, we encourage you to stay away from those and really go through the FAFSA system, go through the colleges and universities to take advantage of the subsidized loans because A, they are um, loaned at lower interest rates. B, um, if the student is receiving that loan, they can defer the payments on the loan as well as the interest payments on the loan until after they graduate from college. Um, so we understand that you know you might not be sure about taking out student loans. You certainly don't want to take out a lot of, of student loan debt, but sometimes there are better loans than other loans, and particularly if students advance in their education, if they were to go on and, let's say, become a doctor or become a lawyer, student loans really are the vehicle by which a lot of people get advanced degrees in this country. So just keep that in mind, and that's why the advisors are here to help talk and explain the student aid award letter that you get from the college or university. Um, the financial aid is available even for a lot of career focused programs. So I always use the example of Douglas J. Douglas J is an accredited program. And if you go to Douglas J, you can actually fill out the FAFSA and get financial aid. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are, are certainly programs out there where you um, might be, particularly for-profit colleges, um, you might be offered financial aid, but many times those are not uh, accredited with the federal government. 
and those would not um, be things that would be uh, like grants where you would be getting money that you don't have to repay. So keep that in mind, sort of the buyer beware conversation. Um, the deadline for, for FAFSA uh, this year is March 1st. Um, in terms of getting priority funding, particularly from the state of Michigan. We have a number of different funding sources in the state that are first come first serve. So for example, if your student um, uh, has been on Medicaid and receiving Medicaid services since they were in sixth grade consistently, they're likely eligible for a scholarship called the Tuition Incentive Program. And that by filling out the FAFSA, they would determine whether or not they're eligible for the TIP scholarship. And um, that money though is a limited pot of money. And so once it runs out, it runs out. And it's really important that families get their FAFSA completed by March 1st, because if you wait until June to fill out a FAFSA, you probably missed out on some of those scholarships and grants that are available, particularly from the state of Michigan. I also want to remind families um, that when you fill out the FAFSA form, um, each a parent and a student need to fill out something called an FSA ID. And that's basically like when you log into Amazon and you have to set up your account and have your little security questions, you know, what's your mother's maiden name, what's your dog's name, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that's just to A, make sure that you are a human and not a robot. And B, um, make sure that um, you know, your information is protected and secure so no one can hack into that information. So the student fills out an FSA ID and the parent fills out an FSA ID. And then when the student actually starts to complete the FAFSA application, because um, they're the ones that technically need to complete that application, when they get to the point of entering their parent's social security number, then you can automatically link the um, IRS tax form that you filled out two years ago to the system, um, which is great because you don't have to have, we used to have students come in with, you know, folders and folders and folders of documents to be able to fill out the FAFSA. Now you really just need to know, each one of you needs to know your social security numbers and then we can link those, those documents together electronically and it pre-populates that form. Um, so it, this is a really a great improvement and there's some more improvements coming down the pike that the federal government just passed um, at the end of the year and we'll let you know about those as time goes forward. But that's, that's important to know that you need to set up that security account first. I mentioned the prior prior tax information. So for example, you know, families are in the process right now of, of hopefully completing your 2020 taxes. Well, the IRS um, uses your 2019 tax information um, for the purpose of FAFSA. Now, I also recognize that with the pandemic, a lot of families' financial situations have changed. So if someone has lost a job in your family or someone has been sick um, or maybe, you know, grandparent has moved in and your financial situation has changed, even though the FAFSA uses the 2019 tax information, you can still um, file an appeal asking the college or university to take your changed circumstances into account uh, when they're making a determination about what money to offer you for college. So normally I, I say, you know, to every family, you can always appeal. Well, this year, this is one of those situations where probably everybody's gonna need to appeal, um, you know, their, their tax information. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you follow up um, and provide whatever documents are necessary to, you know, demonstrate that you have had a change in your, families' finances this year because of job loss or other circumstances. So um, I know I'm just going over like really top level things right now. We do a lot deeper dive into this information in various financial aid workshops that the college advisors set up um, for each one of the high schools. 
Um, I know, for example, the advisors are, are doing like weekly financial aid sessions right now to help families complete the FAFSA form. So if you have any more uh, specific questions or you need more assistance, I would like to encourage you to take advantage of those opportunities that the college advisors are, are offering right now to um, get the help that you need to navigate the process. Oops, sorry, went too fast there. Um, speaking of workshops, we just decided today on the date of our next um, community uh, financial aid workshop for the Lansing School District. So all seniors and parents are welcome to attend a workshop that we'll be hosting on Wednesday, February 17th from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, the fun part about this is that dinner will be delivered to your home. Um, kind of our version of Uber Eats. And um, seniors will be receiving information in the next couple of weeks to register and to RSVP for the number of dinners that you need delivered to your house. So you guys are getting a sneak peek about this, but we encourage um, those of you who have seniors to take advantage of this opportunity because um, we will go over more financial aid information. You'll get to talk to representatives from um, LCC, MSU, and Olivet to our, our Pathway Promise partners through the Promise Scholarship. So you get the, get the heads up here tonight. <clears throat> um, I sort of alluded to the fact that the, the college advisors will help students with scholarships. Uh, I've just pulled up the screenshot from Lansing Community College. Um, their deadline for their scholarship is January 31st, so that's coming up here in a few weeks. Um, if your student is interested in applying, those require some short answer essay questions. Um, but if you fill out the, uh, the questions, it'll automatically, um, uh, I guess, determine what things you might be eligible for at LCC. So you only have to do one series of questions in order to be eligible for a variety of things at LCC. So um, they can get this scholarship on top of a, a Lansing Promise scholarship or a HOPE scholarship or even the scholarships that they might get from, from um, community organizations like Kiwanis or Rotary or Zanta. So encourage students who are going to Lansing Community College to fill out this, this scholarship application by the end of the month. Um, as Terry mentioned, the, the Hope and Promise Scholarship is available to students through the Lansing, uh, their attendance, excuse me, in graduation and living in um, Lansing. Um, this is just a, a glimpse of the fact sheet that we share with the students about their, their Hope and Promise eligibility. Um, all of your uh, seniors in particular uh, get a lot of outreach and engagement from not only the college advisors, but the um, three colleges that I mentioned, LCC, Olivet, and MSU, to um, help them walk through the steps that are necessary to um, you know, complete the process at that particular college in order to access their Lansing Promise Scholarship. But uh, Lansing Promise deadline for scholarships is April 1st. So keep in mind, we give you lots of deadlines, but we also give you lots of reminders and lots of help. <clears throat> All right, so just to sort of review our, our uh, deadlines, college applications typically around November 1st, the scholarship um, deadlines for Lansing Community College is the 31st, Lansing Promise is April 1st. Um, community scholarships vary. Um, I know this uh, between like February and May is when a lot of the um, civic organizations like Kiwanis and Rotary um, issue their scholarship applications. Both the counselors and the college advisors are aware of those deadlines. Um, we have lots of organizations that tell us every year that they have money that goes unspent because they don't get applications from students. So um, there's tons of free money out there if students will just take the time to apply for those scholarships. So I really want to emphasize that. Um, FAFSA, as I mentioned, was March 1st. 
The seniors always have something called decision day. It's usually around May 1st, depending on what day of the week May 1st falls on. But that's a day where we celebrate, you know, their choice to continue their education um, beyond high school. So um, when we're in person, we try to do kind of a fun carnival, picnic, barbecue event. Um, since we've been virtual, the college advisors have done a great job of hosting um, sort of a, a Zoom experience and they have games and they might have entertainment. Um, they give away lots of prizes. Um, so we can always count on, on a refrigerator or a um, laundry basket full of goodies um, and then certainly gift cards and other things. So it's a great way for us to acknowledge all the hard work that the seniors have, have taken part in over the past year to um, you know, follow through on their college going intentions. And then the last thing for parents to be aware of is that um, orientation is required by just about every college and university. And we encourage your student to sign up for orientation. Um, you know, obviously it'd be great if we could all be in person again, but certainly there's a lot of online orientation options that will be available again this summer. Um, I suggest that you sign up for that um, in the spring because the schedule fills up pretty quickly. And if you get in earlier in the season, then you have a more time to figure out, you know, whether or not there's something you were missing, uh, particularly around financial aid. Um, but B, it also gives your student the chance to say, I've got it done, I'm ready to go, and then enjoy their summer. Um, so it's something that, that we really hope that students will be able to, um, you know, get the, that orientation under their belt. And, um, you know, I know sometimes for parents, it's hard to get away for a day or two to go do the orientation with your students or a few hours. I strongly encourage you as a parent to, to do that. Um, on the one hand, um, you're going to ask different questions than your students going to ask. Um, on the other hand, um, it's going to help you be better able to support your student as they're transitioning into adulthood. Um, and a lot of students, particularly first generation students, um, you know, you just don't know what you don't know. So it's great if both you and your students can attend orientation um, together and talk about, you know, what you heard and what you learned in your separate sessions and then be really prepared to start off um, on the right foot in the fall. Um, we always like to just share a little bit of advice for students um, of regarding you know, what is important to focus on while you're in, in high school still under the safety net of your family. One is that grades matter. Um, at this point to a post-secondary program, particularly because they're not going to have test scores like the SAT to look at. So um, if your students are kind of floundering right now, particularly if they have senior-itis, um, they're thinking, ah, well, I don't really need to worry about it. No, grades actually matter up until the end of their senior year. So please encourage them to um, follow through, even though I know it's challenging right now. Um, as I already talked a lot about scholarships and completing the FAFSA, it's important for you and them to understand that if you've never had a conversation about what it costs to go to college, um, it's time to have that conversation. Um, don't look at the sticker price alone. Make sure that you look at the student aid award letter and have you know, the help of the uh, college advisor to understand that implication. But it's important for your students who are ultimately going to have to sign the documents from their college to understand the beginnings of financial literacy as they're transitioning into college. Um, make sure that they ask for help. Um, there's no shame in asking for help and certainly, um, you know, young adults um, sometimes think they're invisible, invincible, excuse me, and um, don't want to ask for help or don't want to let on that they don't know something, but this is the time to really reach out and ask for help. Um, since we're not with them in person right now, uh, we don't know if they need help. So we need them to reach out to us in, in many instances. Um, tying back to what Terry was talking about, it's so important for students to um, 
do something for their education around what they love to do uh, and pursue that. Um, I know, for instance, I have a, a son who's really interested in classical history. You know, I don't know what kind of job market it's going to be like for him, but I was never going to say no to him because that was what he was really interested in. Um, so it's, it's important for them to, to love what they do and, and that will make them more successful in the long run. Um, it's time to practice our organizational skills. I know it's true even for me right now. I have to set up my alarm again because this sleep cycle just is crazy. Um, not only because it's dark outside, but because, you know, I'm working from home. Um, if students don't know how to do things like their own laundry, then it's time to learn how to do your own laundry or time to learn how to cook. Um, these are all good skills for them, whether they're in your house or have moved out of the house. Um, and then lastly, continue to find ways to participate in social activities and extracurricular activities. I know sports are a little crazy right now, um, but you know, there are certainly clubs that are still active in your high schools and it's a great opportunity for students to not only meet other students and interact socially with them, but it also looks good on that college resume when they're filling out that college application. Um, you know, colleges are looking for a well-rounded individual when they're making selections about admissions. So, um, and we also know that the busier students are, um, the happier they are and the more successful they are because they have to learn how to be organized. So those are our, our little tips for, for the students. And then for you, um, I, I know it's hard, especially right now when uh, everybody's living back at home. I know I have my two adult kids came back home for quite some time in the last year. Um, it's easy to fall into our old habits as parents and children. But our job really as parents is to help, you know, launch our kids. And so we want to become, um, you know, not only their advocate, but their advisor. So you don't have to go and fight their battles for them when they're in college. They have to fight their own battles, but they, they want to know that you're going to be there and be there to support them. Um, your behavior and your feelings impact your students' comfort level about college. Um, this is true no matter how old your, your young people are. Um, so if your student says, comes to you and says, I want to go to, oh, I don't know, Stanford in California, um, write out the process with them. You know, it may not be the best fit for them. It may not be what you want for them, but the only way that they're going to learn that is if you let them write out the process a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, start teaching them now before they transition. Um, some of those organizational skills. Um, and then recognize that your relationships with all of these systems and all of these partners and professionals are going to change. Right now, you can pick up the phone and you can call a child's teacher. You can pick up the phone and call the child's principal. You can pick up uh, the phone and, you know, ask questions about how your student is doing. You obviously log into, you know, the, the online system to check their grades. You won't have those rights and privileges when your kid goes off to college. Um, you do have, your student can give you some permissions if they sign off a form that gives you some permissions. And that's particularly helpful if you have financial aid questions or problems, or if your student has a disability and needs additional advocacy support. But just know that, that you know, your kid is in the driver's seat. So they're gonna be the one to have to fight those, those battles, but they need your support to do that, so. Anyway, that just comes from my, you know, now almost 15 years of being a, a parent beyond high school. <laughs> so, um, we're happy to take any questions that you might have. I know we still have some time here, so we'll open it up, Kyron. Thank you guys very much. I just put it into the chat. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to enter those into the chat or the Q&A. Actually, I have a question. Ms. Bernier, you had mentioned a certain number of credits that students could obtain and use towards Michigan State. Could you talk a little more about that? Sure, with the Lansing Promise Scholarship, um, what it is, it's 65 free credits at Lansing Community College, or they can take that equivalent amount, what it costs for the 65 credits 
at LCC and take those monies to MSU and Olivet. So the last I heard a credit at Lansing Community College was $100 a credit. Um, so that's 65 free credits they can get at LCC, um, which is an associate's degree basically. So what a great deal. You get basically a full ride at LCC. Now, if you know anything about how much a credit is at MSU, you're not really gonna get a bang for your buck. Um, $6,500 over two years, um, that, that's not a lot at all. So I advocate to students and parents, your best bet is to go to LCC, get all your requirements down those, um, what do you call those classes? Prerequisites. The prereqs, yeah. Prereqs there for free. And then those credits would then transfer to MSU or Olivet. I want to add with Olivet, they have been such a great partner with the Lansing Promise. Not only will they give you the, well, we'll give you the $6,500 from Lansing Promise, but they've matched it with $14,000 a year for four years. Wow. If you choose to go to Olivet, which brings the price of Olivet College a small private college, the price tag down below MSU. So it's really a great deal. So if you haven't thought about going to Olivet, I would strongly suggest you check them out. Great, great. Ms. Strauss, you had mentioned uh, filling out the financial aid mm -hmm. forms and you said the last date was March 1st. So would it be imperative for parents to get their taxes done by that time or for students to apply? No, because we're using prior, prior taxes, they've already completed those taxes. So that's, okay. that's really great because I think that makes it easier for families. But the issue is going to be if your circumstances have changed this year, you will need to provide some current information to verify that your circumstances have changed. You don't have to have completed your taxes to do that, but um, you will need to give, you know, like your W, twos um, mm -hmm. or your 1099s to the college to verify that you know your circumstances have changed okay Ms. Bernier, you mentioned those thousand it jobs that are going on field is there a website where students and parents can check to find these jobs or where should they look um i would think if they would go and michelle can jump in too a, a good place to start might be the um cap capital area Michigan, Michigan works. works. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be one place. Um, yeah, that statistic was staggering to me when I heard it a couple years ago. Um, you know, they look around Lansing, they can't find the employees they need. They look all over the state of Michigan. They do national um, job uh, postings on that and they can't find the people. And this is why we have people coming into our country from other countries who have the set of skills they need with special, you know, work permits. So I'm thinking if we can steer, you know, some kids into these career pathways and give them a good foundation and just fuel the, the passion and the interest for that type of job, I mean, probably they could get a job right out of high school and some of these employers would even pay for them to go to college. That's a great point. That's a great point. Who should students reach out to for assistance related to filling out the financial aid forms? That would be the college advisor um, in their building, or you could call the financial aid office at the college that you have applied to. Um, but certainly the college advisors are your first point of contact in the Lansing School District. Okay. And with LCC obtaining the associates, so would there be a possibility students could use those 65 credits to just have a free education and then get one of those positions you would mention as far as being like a journeyman or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. As far as financial aid goes, could you guys speak a little more to that in terms of refund checks? I remember being in college and getting that refund check and not being the most responsible person with those funds. Should <laughs> students take the entire amount or could you speak a little bit to that in terms of when you get that check, you know, I remember making 425 an hour at Old Country Buffet, I got a refund check for like $8,000 and I thought I was the king of the hill. 
So could you guys speak a little bit towards that with the refund checks? Right, right. So I think what you're speaking about is um, you probably filled out the, the financial aid agreement letter and you accepted every dollar that they said you were eligible for. Yes, I did. And if you don't need to do that, don't do that. Um, and, and we usually tell, you know, students and families, um, determine what is going to be the, the best amount of money that you want to borrow for a loan because you have to pay that money back, right? But if you start to spend all that money, then you don't have the money next semester that you need to pay for your housing, to pay for your books. Um, so it, it, there are ways actually where you can work with the college to um, make those disbursements a little differently now than what there used to be when we were all in school. Um, but, you know, if you don't need to take out the full, you know, $4,500, don't do that. And sure, do not go buy a, a brand new car with that, that loan payment, right? Uh, as much as you might be tempted to do that. And you can, yes, use financial aid for housing, for books, for transportation, for computer, things like that. That's all factored into the amount of award that you are potentially being offered, particularly if you're planning to, you know, live off campus in an apartment um, or live on campus. Um, but anyways, I, I, I really encourage people to understand back again to buyer beware understand what you're, what you're paying for and what you're getting and what the impact could be long term and if you if you flunk your classes and if you drop out of school all of that money is immediately you're going to have to start paying that back so again you know only take mm -hmm. out exactly what you need to in order to to you know survive and accomplish what you need to accomplish at that particular time one final question before we close out. Would you guys mind sharing and putting in the chat the date of the college career fair? Yes, thank you. I had, had just made a note that I forgot to say that. So we are having a virtual college and career fair on April 23rd. Um, it's all going to be online. And uh, again, your college advisors and your navigators and pathfinders will be um, providing the registration information to the students. Um, it's a Zoom based program. So it's something the kids will be used to. And it will be from 9 until 1pm. So I can put that in the chat. Should students have like their resumes to be able to share anything online with anyone or just they're just visiting or what, what would that No, be? this is um, more of a, a career focused college fair. So our partners that will be there will be um, uh, programs that have career related opportunities that have some type of college program connected to them. So like apprenticeship programs, um, the Michigan Department of Transportation has uh, different internship programs that are available. So they don't need to have their resume all, you know, spiffied up. They just need to be prepared to have a conversation with, with the representatives that will be there. Okay, sounds great. Well, I'd like to thank both of you for these fabulous presentations. Thank you to all of our parents, students, staff, and key stakeholders for joining us this evening for Parent University. We appreciate your support. This session has been recorded and will be available on the Lane School District website. If you go to LanceSchools.net, click Parent University. You'll be able to view this session as well as previous sessions. Uh, any final words that you guys have before we close out that you'd like to share? Ms. Strauss, Ms. Bernero? I will just add that um, we are on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and soon to be TikTok. Um, mm. I don't know what we're going to do on that. But anyways, uh, so students and parents can follow us on those things. And daily, we put um, posts up there with uh, scholarship information and deadlines and, of course, all of our events and things. So uh, check that out. Sounds great. I have nothing further. Thanks for having me and uh, everybody have a good rest of their evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you for supporting Peer University. Take care. Thank you.